Bourbon Barkeep, got ourselves a house call Wednesday. My name's Curtis, and if you are new here, we just do blind battles in the lounge. Just absolute slugfests, and sometimes one bottle doesn't deserve to be there, sometimes they both do. This week, I don't know what I'm tasting yet again. Shocker. No labels, no age, no nothing. And then I find out price, and then we kind of do that, that thing as well. So if that's intriguing to you, like and subscribe already, and then we're gonna get on this whiskey journey right now. Glass A. Okay, pretty traditional nose. I'm gonna come off as whiskey newbie. There's a lot of caramel vanilla in here, and there's just no way around it. Okay, starting to come out a bit more. Wake up, wake up, yep. A lot of richness in here actually. Got some kind of brown butter, maybe some graham cracker, maybe like a like a graham cracker crust, if you will. Pretty excited for those underneath like a nice cheesecake. I don't smell cheesecake, so I don't know why I said that, but it's just the crust. There is now a surprising amount of mint or maybe even like a eucalyptus kind of showing up to where it, uh, there, I mean, there's gotta be rye in it if you're getting those two notes, but that initial smell, didn't lead me down the at least high rye path. Let's see what we got on the palate. Cheers. It's not bad. That's very smooth. Sits on the tongue very well. I was kind of curious because there's not a lot of Kentucky hug, so this is definitely a low proof whiskey. I'm not gonna declare yet but it's definitely a, an American whiskey. That cherry, that caramel, and more vanilla and honey start to kind of come out. But overall, it kind of, it clings to the tongue better than what you would think based off of the finish. There's not a lot going on on the back of the palate. It's mainly just tip of the tongue, a little bit of the mid, and no back palate. But overall, this is actually highly enjoyable. I like, I like what's in the glass, depending on price, obviously. This seems like one of those Saturday or Sunday pours during the football game to where you're just, you just want whiskey on your tongue and you don't care what the tasty notes are. You just need that traditional, this is what whiskey tastes like. Let's see if anything else pops out on sip two. Sip two, there is a lot more rye spice on sip two than what I pictured. Um, you have kind of this mint and licorice kind of combo on the finish. Some clove kind of works its way in there, kind of post swallow as well, to where I'm, I don't know. I, I don't wanna go on a limb just yet, but sip two has me in like this really high rye category to where the nose, Whispers, just whispers, hey, I got a little rye in here. And then the palate's like, uh, I think rye's at the door. And then the finish is like, hey, rye's here, which is kind of surprising. There's still kind of that, you know, typical whiskey notes to where that caramel, that vanilla, and that cherry are still there. Slight cinnamon, but this is a very, very smooth pour and I, I enjoy it. I typically gravitate away from that kind of licorice finish, but I do enjoy kind of that mint that kind of hides in there with just a slight oak presence. It's kind of nice. Now, to be a battle, we still need glass two here. And kind of, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued what this matchup is. Let's get it on the nose. That's like a lot of citrus. A lot of citrus, like a, maybe a candied cherry and honey. What else we got? On the nose, this one is so much more fruit forward with honey and not a ton else either. I don't think that these are going to be the higher priced whiskeys on the shelf, but if they're lower, I mean, if these are under 40, I'm 
I'm really enjoying at least Glass A's pour. Glass B's nose, I think I like a little bit more, but you know, it, it's gonna be preference. So palate counts a little more than nose. Let's see. Not a lot there. That orange and vanilla, maybe like a cream school, does kind of poke its head in there. A lot of, this one, when I was talking about glass A and you went to that mint and eucalyptus to where you can kind of start to assume that there's at least some rye content in here, there is a rye spice in this one that, is it a higher rye? Higher rye than glass A? I don't think so, not yet. But this one, that citrus continues, kind of like this nice lemonade starting to kind of come out to where, do I want to sit there and repeat the caramel and the honey and the oak every single time and vanilla? Check you vanilla. Um, not really. I mean, when they're really prominent, I like to give it, but yeah, this one goes so much fruitier than what glass A is. Not in a bad way. This is just gonna be uh, when it comes down to that scoring and you like that fruitier whiskey, no judgment, you know, it's 2024, no judgment at all. If you like that fruity whiskey, Class B is definitely in a landslide. Let's see if we get anything new on Sip 2. Sip 2. It's about more of the same. I don't think there's too much more coming out. I do think that there's more of the, the Ludens cop drops, not the Hall's cherry, the Ludens ones, where there's this, that twinge of medicinal. And you're like, does this actually do anything for my throat at all? No. Does it taste super good when you're 10 years old? Absolutely. Wow, that Ludens is actually extremely prominent. So if you want that cherry, citrusy, probably more orange, I would say. Do we want to get into specifics of oranges? You know, like your clementines and things? I don't think we need to go down that path. Let's save some time here and just get to the scoring. So I'm gonna go revisit real quick. We're gonna come back, score, see if anything else comes out, do a price reveal, do bang for the buck. Super exciting for everybody. So we'll do that, come right back. We're back, we've revisited. There's only two things to really announce, if you will. So glass A, there's like this like stale peanut, like one that was laying on like a, is it Texas Roadhouse to where you can like just have no sense of respect for anything and you just like throw things on the ground. They still do that. Is that like a pre-COVID thing? I don't know, haven't been in a long time. Maybe should. That being said, um, that stale peanut is still really enjoyable. Once again, going back to childhood, you're just, you're allowed to throw food on the ground? Let's do that. This comes across glass A in that more just traditional whiskey. There's still just a, enough rye to where I'm like, there's no way that's just a low rye rye. So I'm gonna go out and go bourbon. I'm trying to work on myself when it comes to some of these lower proofs and not docking them because it's not, not everything can be 120 proof. Do I like more of a hug? Sure. With these being a lower finish, there was still enough complexity between this like really nice sweetness into this oak, a little bit of cinnamon, and then that peanut started to kind of come out a bit. Class B on the other hand, <sighs> There was just, there's so much Luden's cough drop. It was kind of shocking at this point to where we on Bourbon Barkeep have tasted enough whiskey to where I'm like, I don't remember that much cherry in anything I've experienced outside of just the cough drop itself. This one heavily fruit forward with that orange and lemon. Um, you still kind of had that honey in there to where I think there's a place for it, but I gravitate towards glass A a bit more on my day to day, if you will. So if I'm going into the supermarket or liquor store, I would probably gonna gravitate towards glass A. So 
Scoring wise, we have the senses. That's just gonna be the pure experience, the finish, the complexity, all that fun stuff. So for glass A, and we got the categories somewhere, but we have glass A scoring at, I'm gonna go, um, it's just pleasurable. Like I can't put in the good stuff. Higher pleasurable, we'll just go 68. I don't think it should earn the right of 69 and just knocking on the door. And uh, yeah, 68. Glass B, close. Like I think there's a place. I don't wanna sit there and knock it for being a little more unique on that hopefully lower price tier. So we'll go, we'll keep it pleasurable for sure. Oh, I mean, a lot of whiskeys can fall into pleasurable. This one, mid, just 65. Shouldn't be docked, shouldn't get a ton of credit. Mid, firm, pleasurable. Do with you what you want with that. Now, we go into bang for the buck. Bang for the buck, highly controversial on this, this channel. Some people really like it. Some people have absolutely quit the channel because of it. And I don't mean Noah, I mean like some of you out there. And if you left, open arms, come on back. You know, we all make mistakes. So based off of the randomizer, we had, let's see, what bottle, what battle? 138 assigned to us. So I went into my little stash, got 60 and 35. Now I'm going to do the price reveal, if you will, at least in the Kansas City area for the people that have different prices in different areas. I apologize, I can't just look up everything. So at least in this area, we have prices of glass A, 27, and glass B, 27. Okay, that makes me feel a little bit better about what I was experiencing in the glass because under $30 pours, those are very smooth and very great. And you have no guilt not really diving into them when you're watching the football game, depending on you know what kind of football you're watching. So glass A, I for sure got my 27. Am I gonna sit there and go out and pay 45 for it? No, no I'm not. But I'm gonna pay a little more. 27, I mean that's really cheap nowadays, especially. So we'll go 71. I feel like it, get, it should get a lot of credit. It should get a lot of makeup. Did it blow my socks off to where it needs to be like in the 80s? Like, oh wow, I need to pay $50 for this bottle. No, but it definitely has a place and I, I would pay that all day long, especially for that pour. Like it a lot. Class B, 27. It's fantastic. If you like those tasting notes, great. You could flip flop our scores and we'll, we'll just go about our day. Not a big deal. We'll just go, we'll just go 70. I mean, there's a place for it for sure. I mean, how many other traditional bottles could you have? And then you want something a little different. I could see that. Once again, am I paying 50 for it? No, but for 27, it's fantastic. Well, it's pleasurable. No, well, yeah, you get it. All right, bottle reveal time. So $27, that doesn't give me a lot to go off of. So now we put the labels back on and see what, what we're working with. Battle, 138. Battle of the, the budgets. Because, I mean, how many people need to know if Old Crow's good? We got Elijah Craig small batch and the 1792 small batch. Wow, that's shocking, actually. I don't think I, I mean, we've had 1792 on the channel quite a bit. I do not remember that much cherry and even that much kind of rye profile to it. I get it's marketed as like a little higher with that Barton mix, mash, mash bill. Let's keep it professional. But man, I remember so much more like tobacco and leather kind of coming out of that. That's weird. I'm happy this matchup came up, mainly because I get to enjoy great whiskey that you know you just sit and forget those are those are great pours sometimes but those are two of my personal favorite bottom shelf ones I know a lot of people will talk up wild turkey 101 if you're familiar with the channel you know that i won't 
it's not a personal, well, it is a personal thing, but it's not like a vendetta. It's just how beautifully and wonderfully made, you know? That's what you gotta go with sometimes. So these are two of my personal favorites. Doing it blind was wild. So highly encourage you all to participate, whether it's the pours that we're doing on here, do your own blinds. Stuff comes out to where I did not think 1792 would go that route. Wasn't sure if they'd win, but I definitely didn't expect that, that tasting profile. So learn something new every day. Cheers.